Welcome everyone to part five and the last part of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this Superstar Destroyer bridge. So in this part, we're going to be creating Darth Vader and we're going to be adding Darth Vader right here, kind of looking out of the window. And then we're also going to do the rendering and the compositing and just render out the final image and make it look very nice. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, some great places to do that are over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page where you can get 3D models and assets, you can get procedural materials, artwork project files and tutorial files like this one here so if you'd like to help support me and this channel i will have links in the description to my gumroad and patreon and then we are going to be creating darth vader's cape in this tutorial so i am going to be downloading this fabric uh, 012 and this is from ambientcg.com and i'm going to be downloading this 4k jpeg so i'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download this fabric for his cape all right, so let's get started with creating Darth Vader. So I'm going to press Shift C just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center of our scene. I'm now gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna start by creating Darth Vader's cape. So to do that, I'm gonna add a plane. I'm now gonna press G and Z and we're just going to bring this up and I just wanna bring it up here just so that it's kind of out of the way so that this other stuff isn't in our way. Then I can press R to rotate and I wanna rotate this on the X axis by 90 degrees. So I'm now going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to press control R and I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel out until there's two loop cuts and I'm going to left click and then right click. Then I'm going to press one on the top of my keyboard or click right up here to go to the vertex select and I'm gonna hold down the alt key and I'm just gonna alt select this top one right here. Then I'll press S2 scale and I'm gonna scale this down on the X axis just like that. Then what I wanna do is I wanna press control R and I wanna scroll out until these are about squares. So just something like that. And then I can left click and then right click. So we're kind of subdividing this so that it has more topology. And that way when we do the cloth simulation, it'll have more detail to work with. Now I'm also going to alt select this loop and hold down the shift and alt key and select this loop. And I'll press G to grab, click and let go with my mouse wheel. Just kind of bring that over a little bit. And then I'm going to select this vertex, shift select this vertex. And I also want to press O and O is gonna turn on this proportional editing. So I can now press G to grab and click and hold with my mouse wheel. Maybe scroll that down to scroll the proportional editing down a little bit. And then I want to press S to scale and I wanna scale it on the X axis to kind of push them together. Now you can see that it's not really working right now. And that is because this pivot point here, the transform pivot point, it's set to individual origins. I wanna set it instead to median point. And now if I press S to scale and X, to scale it on the x-axis, I can just bring that down and maybe scroll my scroll wheel to change the proportional editing. And I basically just want, just want to create that, all right? So now I'm going to go right over here to the modifier properties and I want to subdivide it so it has a lot more detail. So I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm gonna go right down here and add the subdivision surface modifier. And then I'm gonna turn the viewport and render levels both up to four so that it's pretty detailed. And then using the object context menu, I can shade this smooth. So I'm going to tab back into edit mode and kind of scale this a little bit more together, just like that. And then I also want to press control R to add a loop cut. And I want to drag a loop cut right there just to sharpen up this. So this is going to be where his neck is. And then his cape is just going to come down there. And then I want to press three on the numpad to go to side view. And I want to press Z and move my mouse over to go into wireframe view. So I want to box select this and then press R to rotate and G to grab. We can also turn off the proportional editing and I'll just box select this part, rotate this and grab it and just kind of move it up there. And then box select this and just kind of rotate it and move it up. Why I'm doing this is because I want to add a ground plane and then we're gonna use that for the cloth to kind of go around on the plane. And then also I wanna tab in edit mode and I'm gonna add a loop cut right here. So I'm gonna press control R to add a loop cut. I'm gonna click and drag and drop it down there and then just click to place that. So let's now add that ground plane. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna just add a plane and then I can press G to grab, Z on the Z axis, just bring it up. I can press three on the numpad to go to side view and I can just kind of scale this up and press G to grab and just move it up like that. So now when we play the simulation, the cloth is just kind of rub along the ground plane right here. And it'll kind of make it look like Darth Vader was walking and then the cape was just kind of trailing behind him. Now also I need something right here so that the cape doesn't just totally fall flat. So I'm gonna create a little shape and then we're gonna use that with a collision. And that way the cape won't go through him and it'll look like he's standing right there inside the cape. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a cube for this. I'm going to add a cube. I'll press G and Z. We're going to bring this up and then I can press S to scale and I'll scale this way down and I can press G and move it on the Y axis and then I can 
tab into edit mode and I want to press S2 scale and Z on the Z axis. And I just want to scale that up just like that. So I now want to tab back into object mode and I'm going to press control two. And that is the shortcut key for adding a subdivision surface modifier. And then using the object context menu, I can shade this smooth. So I'm now going to tab into edit mode and I want to scale this out on the X axis just to make it a bit thicker. And then I also want to add some loop cuts. So I'm going to press control R drag up and add a loop cut right there. And then I can press control R and add a loop cut right down there. So I can now press three or click right up here to the face select. And I want to select this face because I want to make Darth Vader's shoulder. So it kind of looks like the cape is going around his shoulder. So I'll press E to extrude and S to scale, kind of just make a shoulder like that. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. So I'll click on this and I'll press E to extrude and S to scale. We're basically just making a basic shape for Darth Vader and then the cape will kind of fall on it. So I also want to press control R and I want to scroll out just to add some loop cuts and I'm going to left click and then right click so it hops back to the center. And then I can press S to scale and I want to scale it on the X axis and just kind of bring that out. And then I can also press three and I can click right here to the face select and I'm going to press E to extrude S to scale and then E to extrude. And we're just going to make Darth Vader's neck just maybe add a loop cut right there by pressing control R, just adding a loop cut like that. And then this does look a little bit too high up. So I'm going to shift alt and select this loop and then shift alt and select this loop and just shift select these. Then I can press G and Z and we're just going to bring that down a little bit. So just something like that. I think I'll also press control R and just add a loop cut right there. So we just need a basic shape. So something like that is going to work great. And then I can also move this cape forward, although I don't want it to be that far. So I'll move it back a little bit. And and then also I can press three to go to side view and I can rotate this, just kind of rotate it up and move it over a little bit. So that way the cape can kind of fall down. Um, and then also this top part here, I think that it needs to be kind of scaled down and kind of put more around the neck. So I'm going to box select this entire neck piece and I'm going to bring it down, just kind of scale it down like that. And then I think I also need to press control R and left click and right click. And then I can kind of scale this up, maybe grab this vertex and maybe grab this vertex and just kind of bring it up a little bit, basically just so that it's not going through uh, the object right here. All right, so that is looking really good. So let's press Control S to save, and now let's set up the simulation. So I'm gonna go right over here to, where is it? The physics properties right here. And I'm going to first select the cape object, and then I am going to add the cloth physics. All right, and it kind of jumped down here. That's because um, we, I think I moved the timeline, and so it kind of simulated it. What I'm going to do is add the timeline. If you already have the timeline here, you can use it, but I'm going to click right here when the crosshair appears and then drag down and that is going to split the window. And then if I click right here, I can go right over here to the timeline. If I can find it right here, the timeline with the clock icon. And then you can see if I scroll back and forth, now it's going to go back up here. So now that I'm on frame one, I can press the space bar and that's going to play the simulation, but you can see the cape just starts to fall through everything. And I don't want it to do that. Um, I want it to collide with these objects. So I'm going to click on this object um, and I'm going to click on collision and add the collision physics. And then I'm also going to click on this plane and add the collision physics. So now if I play this, you can see it's colliding with those objects. Now we don't really want that. We want the cape to be attached around Darth Vader's neck. So it kind of hangs down. So what we need to do is we actually need to pin this right here so it doesn't move. So this neck part right here, we want that to stay exactly where it is. So to make it stay exactly where it is, I'm going to tab into edit mode. And then what I want to do is I want to just shift, hold down the shift key, and I want to select all of these vertices right here. So just those uh, eight vertices. And now what I need to do is I need to click right over here on this green triangle, and that's going to go to the object data properties. So what I need to do is I need to add a vertex group. So I'm going to click on this plus here under the vertex tab. And now we've added a vertex group. Now I want to tell these vertices to be assigned to that group. So now that I have this selected, I can just click on assign and that is going to assign it to the group. And to make sure it's assigned, you can press A to deselect everything. And then if you select the group, you can click on select and you can see it's just going to select those vertices. So now what we can do is we can tell the cloth simulation that those vertices are going to stay exactly where they are. So to do that, we're going to click right back over here on the physics properties and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to open up the shape 
right here. And underneath shape, you can see that there is a pin group. So I want to pin those vertices. So I'm going to click right here and here is the vertex group that we made. So I'm going to click on that group. And now if I play this, you can see that these are going to stay exactly where they are. And so now Darth Vader's cape is just kind of going to hang there. So I'm just going to play the simulation and just kind of let it go and see what it looks like. And you can totally adjust the shapes of everything. You can adjust the shape of um, this object here. You can also adjust the shape of the cape. Um, so I'm just going to play through this and see how it is. And also I'm going to kind of look at it from farther away, see how that looks. Um, so that is looking pretty good. Although I think I want to tab into edit mode on this object and I'm going to press three to go to the face select. And I'm going to also uh, click right here to turn on the proportional editing. And I'm just going to select some of these faces and maybe just pull them out a little bit. And then I can play that and kind of see how that looks. Once we create the simulation, we can actually go back into like sculpt mode and edit mode, and we can kind of edit the object just to get it to be the exact shape that I want. All right, so that is really it. That is looking quite fine. Um, there are a few things that I want to change, but I'm actually going to go into sculpt mode and just kind of change a few things and we can kind of go into edit mode and play around with it. So I now want to apply this so it's just an object. So I'm going to click right over here on the modifier properties, and you can see that right here there is a cloth and there also is a subdivision. So I want to apply both of these modifiers. So I'm going to click on the subdivision first and I'll press control A. That is the shortcut key for applying modifiers and then click on the cloth and press control A. So if I tab into edit mode now, you can see that it's been applied and now this is just a mesh object. So I can now select this object and I can press X and we want to delete it. And then I can select this and press X and I want to delete it. So there we go. We have Darth Vader's cape. Now there's definitely some things that I want to do because you can see there's like some glitches here. Um, and also I do want to play around with the shape a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually click right here on this object mode and I'm going to go over to sculpt mode and we can just kind of use the sculpt mode to kind of pull the cape around and kind of change the wrinkles and things like that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, actually press T and T is going to open up this side panel right here and I'm going to click on this brush right here. So this is the grab brush. So now that I've selected that, um, I'm going to make my radius a little bit bigger. And also if you have a drawing tablet, you could totally use the drawing tablet for sculpting. Um, but I find that it's pretty easy for something like this just to use my mouse. So I'm going to be using my mouse. Um, I won't be using my drawing tablet, but you could totally use a drawing tablet if you'd like to. So the first thing that I'm going to do is kind of just click, click, and just kind of tap, just click and drag a little bit. Then I just want to kind of pull the bottom part out a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit more round. And then this front part, I think I'll just kind of bring it in a little bit. And really, we just want it to look good from this um, perspective, because I'm not going to be looking at Darth Vader from the front. I'm just going to be looking at him from the back. And then also, I think these shoulders are a little bit big. So I'm going to use the grab brush and just kind of click and drag and just kind of push the cape in a little bit. And then again, down here, I think I'll just kind of pull this out, kind of round it a little bit. Um, just pull that out a little bit. And then also on side view here, I'm going to just click and drag and just kind of push that out. Now, I also don't want these wrinkles right here to be that big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift S and shift S is going to take me right over here to the smooth brush. And then I can also press F and that's going to make my brush bigger. And then I want to turn this strength value way down. So I'll turn it way down to maybe just like a 0.1 or a 0.2. I'm actually just going to change the strength down to a 0.1 and that way it won't be quite as strong. So I'm now just going to kind of click and drag and you can see what I'm doing as I'm kind of clicking and holding down and dragging. It's basically just smoothing the mesh out. So I'm going to smooth this all out because there's some weird glitches right here. So I'm going to smooth that all out. I'm also going to smooth this out. And I just don't want this many wrinkles because I don't think Darth Vader's cape really moves around that much. It's a little bit more stiff. So I'm just going to kind of smooth this all out, smooth that out a little bit. I don't want to overdo it because I do like the detail and it still needs to look like cloth. Um, but I'm just going to kind of smooth that out a little bit. All right, let's look at it from farther away. That is looking pretty good. And then I think I'll also smooth this out here, this edge, and maybe smooth out that edge. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for now. So I'll press Control S to save, and then I can change from sculpt mode back to object mode. So that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, when I put it in the scene, if I want to, I might just play around with it a little bit just to make it look a little bit better. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So now we're going to be modeling Darth Vader's helmet. Now we're not going to be modeling the the front of it. We're not going to be modeling all the cool details in his helmet because that would take a long time. And that's kind of like, that would have to be like a whole separate tutorial because it would take a long time. I'm just going to be modeling the back of his helmet. So I'm going to press shift C to center the 3d cursor. And then I can press shift a, and I'm going to add a UV sphere. I can now press G and Z and just kind of bring this up 
and then I can press S to scale and we're gonna scale this down. And then I can just kind of stick it right here, kind of bring it down here and just stick it right where his helmet would be. So I'm now gonna press one to go to front view and I'll also bring this up a little bit and I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna press one to go to the vertex select. And then I can also press Z and move my mouse over to go into wireframe. So I just wanna deselect everything and then I'm just going to box select the bottom. So I'm just gonna press B for the box select, just select the bottom of that UV sphere. And then I want to delete the faces. So I can now just hold down the Alt key and select this loop and I'll press S to scale. And actually we have the proportional editing on and I don't want that. So I'm gonna click on this to turn it off. So I'll press S to scale and then I'll press G and Z and we're gonna bring that down just a little bit, kind of like that. And then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna bring that down on the Z axis. Just kind of bring it down about this far and then I can press S to scale and scale that out. And then also I think I'm gonna box select this and kind of bring it up a little bit. And I think I'll box select this and scale it down just a little. And looking at reference images is super important. I am looking at reference images while I'm modeling this and also looking at my tutorial result that I created when I was practicing the tutorial and trying to get it as best as possible. So now I wanna press B for the box select and I'm just going to box select half of his helmet and I'm gonna press X to delete and I want to delete the vertices. So I can now click on add modifier and I'm gonna add a mirror modifier to replace that side. And then I'm also gonna turn on clipping here and this way, when I move something over here, it's gonna be mirrored over to the other side. Now I'm also going to press the O key to turn on the proportional editing and I want to select this and I'm gonna press G and Z and I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit and then I'm going to just select this right here and I'll press G and Z and just kind of bring that up. So basically I'm creating kind of a curve. I think I'll maybe bring that down a little bit as well. So I'm just kind of creating a curve there in the back of his helmet. And then I'm gonna go right over here to the front and I just wanna select this and I'll press G and Z and I'm just kind of bring this out and then I can also press G to grab and I just want to kind of want to bring this stuff in. So I'm just going to select some of these parts and just kind of press G to grab and push them in just like that. And then also maybe right here, this kind of goes up straight. So I'm just going to press G to grab, just kind of select some of these vertices and press G to grab and just kind of pull that up just like that. So it really should just look good from the back. And then also, I think this is coming out a little bit too far. So I'm going to alt select this ring of vertices and I'll press G to grab and just bring it in just a little, just like that. All right, so now I want to thicken this up because it doesn't have any thickness. So I'm gonna click on add modifier and we can add the solidify modifier to thicken that up. And then I can turn the thickness value up right here just to kind of thicken that up. All right, and then also I forgot to add the thickness on the cape because the cape doesn't have any thickness. So I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm gonna add the solidify modifier on that cape as well. And just turn the thickness up a little bit just as much as you need. I think something like that looks pretty good. Let's click back on the Vader helmet and I'm gonna press control two. Control two again is the shortcut key for adding a subdivision surface. You can also click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface modifier. All right, so that is looking better now. It's much more smooth, but I need to add some loop cuts to define the shapes. So I'm gonna press Control R, click and drag, and then add a loop cut there. Control R, let's add a loop cut right there, and then Control R and add a loop cut right there. All right, so that is looking pretty good. So I'm just going to shade this object smooth now with the object context menu. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add that little part that kind of pops out and it's kind of behind his helmet and it kind of comes over. Um, now, I'm not gonna be looking at this from the top. It's really just gonna be far away, kind of all the way over here and you're just gonna see the back of it. So I'm just going to add this right up here and then it's just gonna end kind of up here. From here to here, I want that to be an even amount of thickness. So I'm just gonna select this, double tap the G key, drop it right there. And then I can also turn off the proportional editing because I don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna select this, double tap the G key, place it there, select this, double tap the G key, bring it out a little bit. Actually here, I need to double tap the G key. And then this, I can maybe bring it back in a little bit. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and just select all of these because I want them to be a little bit thinner or a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna double tap the G key and just kind of push that in a little bit and maybe push this in a little bit. So it doesn't have to be exact because we are gonna be looking at this from pretty far away, but just something like that. All right, so before I extrude that little piece out, I actually want to apply the mirror and the solidify. So I'm gonna click on the mirror, press Control A to apply it, and it's not applying, and that's because we're in edit mode. So I need to tap back into object mode, and then I need to press Control A to apply the mirror. So I'm gonna click on the solidify and press Control A to apply that, and there we go. And then I will leave the subsurf modifier because that's just gonna kind of gonna smooth everything out.
All right, so now what I can do is I can press three on the top of my keyboard or click right up here to the face select. And I'm gonna press B for the box select and I'm just going to select those faces and then also shift and select those two faces. And then I'll press B for the box select and I'm going to box select all of those faces. All right, so now we just need to extrude these out. So I'm gonna press E to extrude and just extrude that out a little bit, um, probably about that and then click to place that. All right, there we go. Now I need to also sharpen up those edges there. So I'm gonna tab back into edit mode and I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut, add a loop cut there and Control R and add a loop cut there. And then I will also thicken this up here. So I'll press Control R, add a loop cut and Control R, add a loop cut. All right, there we go. So that is the back of Darth Vader's helmet. So I'll scale this down because it's a little bit too big and then I'll press G and Z and we're gonna bring this down, just kind of bring it down just like that. And really it just needs to look good from the back. Now you can see right here that he actually looks a little bit short. Um, so if that's happening for you, you can just kind of scale this up on the Z axis and just make it a little bit longer and then just kind of bring this down. And then also this is a little bit funky, like the neck is kind of bumping out there on the back. So if you need to, you can tab into edit mode and you can also turn on the proportional editing and then you can press G to grab and just kind of push some of these in and just kind of make it a better shape for the neck, something like that. And then you can also kind of put the helmet right down there. I think I'll also select these sides here and just kind of bring them down a little bit um, so it looks like it's kind of going up around his neck and maybe bring that helmet down a little bit more. And then I do find that getting the scale of the helmet is important because right now I think that's actually too big. Um, so again, looking at reference images could be very helpful to kind of see the size because if you get the size too big, it can definitely kind of ruin the look of it. And I think it is a bit smaller because you know, this is his entire body. So, and he is also pretty tall. Darth Vader is pretty tall, I believe. All right, now I do think I want to actually make this just a little bit smoother because I don't really want all these um, folds in here. So I'm gonna click back on his cape and I'm going to change this from object mode to sculpt mode. And then again, I can press shift S to make sure I'm on the smooth brush. And I'm just gonna click and drag and just kind of smooth that out just a little bit more because I really just don't want it to be that uh, wrinkly. So I wanna smooth that out even more so it's a bit smoother, kind of smooth that all out. I'm really just clicking and dragging with my mouse, smoothing that all out. Okay, that is looking better. Let's go back into object mode. And also something else that you could do to really just help to make it look more realistic is you could actually add in a reference image of Darth Vader and then that way you could kind of scale the helmet and scale the cloak to his actual size um, and that would ensure that you got the scale correct. Um, so that is gonna be it. So that it looks good. Um, I could of course change this later when I'm looking at the final result. If I just see some things I wanna change, I could change that. But for now, this is gonna be it. So I'm gonna click on this helmet, shift click on the cape, and then I can press G and Z and we're just gonna put our little Darth Vader character into the Star Destroyer. So I'm gonna scale this down, bring it in. So I want Darth Vader to be big enough that his helmet kind of comes up to half of the window and then his cape is just touching the ground. Probably about that big. Um, let's just kind of move this over a bit closer. Maybe bring that up a little bit. Let's go into rendered mode and see how that's looking. So we need to add materials obviously, but that is looking pretty cool. Now, one other thing that I think would really help with the modeling is if I tab into edit mode on this helmet, I am going to just kind of flatten the top a little bit because right now it's kind of bumping out a little bit. So I'm gonna press Z, move my mouse over to go into wireframe. I'm gonna tab into edit mode on the helmet and I'm gonna press one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select. So I can now just box select this right here, these top parts, and I'm gonna press G to grab and Z on the Z axis. And I'm just gonna push down the top of his helmet just a little. And I think I'll also turn off the proportional editing because I don't really wanna use the proportional editing. So I'll just bring that down maybe bring that down a little bit as well. All right, there we go. So it's just a little bit more flat. All right, so just kind of take a look back at this and just kind of see how the overall scene feels. I do think he's a little bit too big. He just seems a little bit too big. So I'm gonna select both of those objects and I will just scale them down and just move them down. Just put that into place just like that. Let's kind of take a look back. Just kind of take a look at the final thing, see how that's looking. Um, now also something that I think might help is if the bottom of the cape is a little bit wider. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode on the cape and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hold down the alt key and I'm just going to alt select one of these um, bottom loops. I can now make sure I have the proportional editing on and then I can press S to scale and I need to scroll my mouse wheel up and I'm going to scale this on the x-axis. Just bring that out so it's a little bit wider. 
and then just click to place that. And I think that looks a little bit better just so that the cape just kind of comes out a little bit. So it's a little bit wider than his shoulders. And also if I zoom in here, I did notice that there were kind of some glitches right here. And this is because of the solidify. So if I change the thickness, you can see that it, that now kind of gets fixed. So I do want it to be thick, but just a little bit. Um, so that looks much better. All right, so we can now add the materials. So I'm gonna click on the helmet and let's add the material for the helmet. So I'm gonna click over on the shading tab and we can make the shiny helmet. So I'm gonna go into rendered mode and then right over here, I have the shader nodes. So I'm gonna click on new and I can just call this helmet. And then right here on the principled shader, I wanna turn the base color way down so it's much darker and I'm gonna make it fully black. And then on the roughness here, I'm going to turn the roughness pretty far down. I think I'll change the roughness to like a 0.2. So it's pretty shiny because this helmet is very reflective. And then you could also change the specular. If you turn the specular up, you're able to see a lot more of those reflections, or you could turn the specular down. I'm just going to maybe turn the specular up just a little bit, and then you can play around with the roughness value. So you're not really able to see his helmet that well, and that's because it's black. And so it's kind of merging with the black stars. So what I need to do is I need to just create some lights and put the lights around his helmet to kind of make some reflections on his helmet. So I'm just going to select one of these um, lights right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate and S to scale. And I'm just going to kind of move this over. I can press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. Just kind of bring this over. Let's kind of move this out of the way so I have a bit more space here. So I'm going to scale this down, move it over, and I want to move it in front of Vader. So just about like that. And then I'll press R to rotate and I'm going to rotate this so that the light is pointing at his helmet just like that. So I can now go into rendered mode and you can see that is looking super cool. Now, something that I wanna do is I wanna change the shape from square to rectangle. So on this object, on the light right here, you can change it to rectangle and then you can change the size X and Y and I wanna turn up this Y value and make it so it's kinda of long and that way it's going to have a nice rim light for his helmet. So it basically just is a rim light and it's going to reflect on the side of his helmet. And then it's way too strong right now. You can see that's super, super bright. So I'm gonna turn the power way down to maybe just like a two. Um, so it's much less strong. And then I think I'll scale it up a little bit and that way it'll just make it a little bit more smooth. And then you could also change the color if you want. If you wanna make it look like a little bit more blue or something like that. Um, you could change that as well or a little bit more white. So I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate and then I'll double tap the R key to do the trackball rotation. And I want to make another light and this light is going to be more on the side of his helmet. Um, so you can see more of a reflection on the side there. And then I'll turn the Y value down a little bit and I'll turn the X value up a little bit. And then I'll turn the power up as well. Maybe turn the power up to like a five or a six. And if I just zoom over to this, I think I want to move it over a little bit and then just kind of rotate it sideways a little bit more and maybe just scale the entire thing down a little bit. And I think I'll turn the brightness down a little bit as well. And maybe this color here, maybe I'll make it a little bit more blue. I think that does look pretty cool. And then I think I'll just add one more light. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this light. I'm gonna jump over to it and I'll just kind of rotate it. Maybe I'll put this light kind of here on the top. Just kind of rotate that light, point it at the helmet. And I need to move it a little bit more away from the wall. So I'll bring it away from the wall a little bit. And also maybe I'll make it more of a square. And then I can turn the power up a little bit as well, just to give a bit of a reflection there in Vader's helmet, just like that. And you can really just keep on duplicating lights and adding as many lights as you want. So if you wanna like add a reflection like that, you can really just um, look at reference images of his helmet and kind of see what reflections look cool. You don't wanna overdo it, but just a few reflections like that, I think looks really nice. All right, so let's press Control S again to save. And now I'm gonna create the material for his cape. So I'm going to select his cape and we're still in the shading tab. So I'm going to click on this new button right here to add a new material and we can just call this cape. So earlier in this tutorial series, I turned on the Node Wrangler add-on. Now, if you don't have that enabled, you can just click on Edit and then open up the Preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons, over here on the search, you can type in Node and then just turn on this Node Wrangler add-on and then close the user preferences. So I'm now going to select the principled shader and then I'm going to press Control Shift T. And then as I talked about at the beginning of the tutorial, I am going to be using this fabric texture. Again, link is in the description. It's a free texture. So I am going to select the color and then I'm going to shift select the normal GL and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the roughness. So just those three, the normal GL, the color and the roughness. And then I can click on principled texture setup. And you can see that Blender has automatically set up all the textures for us. Now I want to use a easy texturing method so that we don't have to use any UV map 
mapping. So I'm going to take this object and plug this object into the vector. And then I'm actually not going to be using the base color because I want his cape to look black. So I'm going to click and drag and just pull out this wire and then let go. And then on the base color here, I'm going to make this fully black. So it's very dark. Now to finish setting up that super cool texturing method without UVs, I'm going to change the object to the vector. And then on the roughness and normal, I want to change this flat here to box. And then I'm going to change the blend value to 0.2. And then I'll change the flat to box. And then I'll change the blend value to 0.2. So this is going to very nicely and evenly place the texture all over the object. And then to scale the texture, I'm going to click right here on the scale drag down and then I can drag left and right to change the scale. So I just want to make it very, very small because this is cloth or fabric. So you're not really able to see that in very much detail. It's going to be really small. So just very small, something like that. And there we go. That's looking very nice. Now I do want to play around with the roughness value. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a color ramp. Let's just drop the color ramp right here. And then I can click and drag and I can pull this black tab out. And you can see when I drag the black tab out, it's going to make the cape more shiny. So I do want it to be a little bit more shiny, something like that. And then also you can play around with the specular value. So if you want it to be more reflective and kind of show more of those reflections, you can turn the specular up. Or if you want it to be very dark, you could turn it down, but don't turn it down all the way because then it's just going to be fully black. So I think I'll just turn the specular up a tiny bit just so that it's um, I can see a little bit of the reflections. And then also we should probably add lighting to the side of his cape just so that you can see it a little bit better. So I'm just going to actually go back to the layout here because we are done with the materials. I'm just going to click on one of these lights right here and I can press shift D to duplicate and R to rotate. Just kind of make like a rim light on the side of Vader. And then also if you click right over here on the object data properties, you can change the scale or the size of this. So I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger, maybe pull it up there and kind of rotate it. And then I can also turn the power up. So maybe I'll turn that up to about a 16. And I think I want to bring it back a little bit. So I can't see quite as much of the reflection on his cape. So something like that, kind of rotate that over. And I think I'll just make it a little bit smaller and then just kind of bring it down. So it's mostly just reflecting on his cape. All right, so check it out. That is looking super, super cool. And it definitely looks like Darth Vader looking out of the windows in his Star Destroyer. And then one thing I think I want to do is actually scale it up a little bit. I'm still not quite sure about the scale, but I think that is a little bit better, maybe just a tiny bit smaller. Uh, really, you can just play around with that and just kind of look at it and kind of see what you want whatever looks good to you. Now, I do think some of these lights are just a little bit too bright. Um, I do want the entire scene generally to just be a little bit darker, and that way you'll be able to see those lights a little bit brighter. They'll light up a little bit more. So I'm going to select a few of these lights, and I'm just going to turn the power down a little bit. I'm going to select this light here. I think I'll turn the power down just a little. And then also this main big light right here. Let's try to find it. Here it is right here, this big light right here. I think this is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to make it a little bit less bright. So if these lights are darker, then these lights right here are kind of going to pop out of the scene more and you'll be able to notice them a little bit better and see them a little bit better. And then also um, some of these lights kind of around Vader's helmet, I might turn that up a little bit, just make it a little bit brighter just so that you can really um, see him a little bit better. And then also these lights back here, I also want to make them a bit darker. Um, so I just changed them to like 250. They were a little bit brighter. So I just turn them down a little bit just so that these lights here on the side are a little bit darker. So really these small little adjustments are really just going to depend on your scene because your scene is going to be a little bit different than mine. It's not going to be exactly the same. So you really just need to change this to your liking. All right. So we are almost done with this final scene. I'm just going to do a few more things. So I want to add in a radiance volume in Blender Eevee, and then I'm just going to bake the lighting just to make it a tiny bit more realistic. If you're using the cycles render engine, you don't really need to do this step because cycles is already a ray traced render engine, but I'm just going to use an irradiance volume just to bake the lighting and make Eevee look a little bit more realistic. And then we'll do the rendering and do a little bit of compositing to kind of color correct it and make the final image look very nice. And another thing that I want to do to make it just look a little bit better is I'm going to select the camera and I want to add a depth of field. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here and then I want to turn on the depth of field on the camera settings. And then on the focus on object, I want to click on the eyedropper and I'm going to click on the helmet 
element right here. And that way the things over here will just be a little bit blurred. So you can now just play around um, with the F stop value. So you can see if you turn it way down, everything's going to be super blurred except this. Um, I don't want it to be that much. I'm going to turn this maybe to like a two. Um, let's see, what does a two look like? That's pretty good. So this is just a tiny bit blurred and then that's more in focus. Maybe like a 1.5. Maybe that will look a little bit better. All right, that is pretty good. So let's now add that irradiance volume. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here to light probe and I'm going to add the irradiance volume. I'm going to press S to scale and we want to scale it up. And I want to scale it up so that these little dots in here are filling up the entire scene. So I'm going to press seven to go to top view and I'm just going to go into wireframe. So this smaller cube right here needs to be filling up the entire scene. And then we can also go to front view and I can scale it down. And then I can also turn the resolution up just to make it a little bit more realistic and bake the lighting a little bit better. Now this isn't going to change very much, it, but it is just a subtle thing to make it a little bit more realistic. So on the resolution here, I can turn all of these values to eight instead, and that's going to double the resolution. So it will just bake with a little bit more detail. So to bake the lighting, I'm going to click right over here to the render properties, and I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to open up the indirect lighting tab, and then I can click on bake indirect lighting. So if I go into render mode, I can kind of see what it's doing. So it's kind of looking at all the lights and trying to figure out where the lighting would go and it'll just make Eevee look a tiny bit more realistic and it's almost done it didn't take my computer too long and it's finished so there we have it and then also a few other things just to really make sure this scene looks very nice make sure the screen space reflections is turned on and also make sure the bloom is turned on so that there's a little bit of a glow there and then also make sure the ambient occlusion is turned on so i can just press Control s to save and then i can press f12 to render the image and it finished and because we were using blender ev it only took my computer uh, less than three seconds to render that so that is looking super cool so let's now do the compositing just to make this look very nice. So I'm gonna click over on the compositing tab and then I'm gonna click on use nodes um, and that way we can use the compositing nodes. Now also right down here, we don't need this timeline. So to close it, I'm gonna click right here when the crosshair appears and I'm gonna drag up and then drag down and then let go to close the timeline. So I'm first gonna press shift A and I'm going to search for an RGB curves node. And this way we can just do a little bit of color correction. So I'm just gonna add the RGB curves node right here. And then we did already turn on the node wrangler add on. So you can hold down the control and shift key and click on nodes. And that is going to add the viewer node and we can preview the final render in the backdrop. Now, if you don't see the backdrop, you probably need to click on this button right here to preview it. And then also you can press V to zoom the backdrop out and Alt V to zoom the backdrop in. So I'm just going to bring it out like that so we can see the entire thing. So I'm just going to do a little bit of color correction. So I first just want to make everything a little bit more contrasty. So on the C value right here on the RGB curves, I'm going to click and drag and just pull that out so it's a little bit brighter. And then down here, I'm going to click and drag and make it a little bit darker. So adding that curve right there is going to make everything a little bit more contrasty. And then I also just want to add a little bit more of blue colors. So I'm going to click on the B right here and I can just drag out and just add a little bit more of those blue colors just like that. And then also something you could do is you could press shift A and you could search for a hue saturation value node. And I'm just going to drop that right there. And then if you turn the saturation up, that's going to make the colors more saturated. So you could just bump up the saturation a tiny bit if you want the scene to be a bit more vibrant. And then the value that is going to change the brightness of the scene. So if you like it a bit more bright, you could turn it up or you could turn that down if you want it to be a little bit more darker. And then the hue, I would just keep the hue how it is because the hue can really mess up the scene. You can see it's changing all the colors and I don't really want that. All right, so the last thing that I wanna do is I want to add a vignette just to make the edges of the scene a little bit darker. So to add a vignette, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for an alpha overnode. Let's drop the alpha overnode right here and then we can plug the image up to the viewer and composite. So I now just wanna kind of move these over to the side a bit. Just kind of move these up. So down here, I want to press shift A and I want to search for a box mask. Let's just drop the box mask right there. So I can now click on the box mask. And if I turn this image to black, you'll be able to see it better. I'm just going to turn this image here to black. And then if I click on the box mask, you're now able to see that white box right there. So if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see it has a width and a height. So I'm going to change the width and the height and just make it pretty big. 
just like that and just leave a little bit of a track kind of there on the corner. So now what I want to do is I want to press shift A and I'm going to search for a blur node because we want to blur the box mask and this is going to help us to make the vignette. So I can now plug the mask here into the image and then I can control shift and click on the blur to preview it. And then I'm going to change the X and Y values both to like a 250. So it's pretty blurred. So I'm going to change it to 250 and now you can see on the edges there it's pretty dark. So now what I can do is I can add this into the final image. So I'm going to take this image right here from the blur and I'm going to put that into the factor and then I can control shift and click on the alpha over to preview that. Now right now it's doing the opposite so it's making everything in here dark. So I want to take this image from the RGB curves and I want to put that into the bottom one and then this top image here that needs to be black. And now you can see what it's doing. So it's adding that nice darkening around the edges and it just kind of draws your eyes into the center of the scene. You can see if I control shift and click on this, you can see here it is without. And then if I control shift and click on this, you can see there it is with the vignette. And then also if you're using the cycles render engine, what I would do is I would press shift A and I would search for the denoise node and I would drop the denoise node right here and just plug the compositing and viewer up to it. What that's going to do is it's going to denoise the image and so it's going to get rid of any little bits of grain and just make it look very nice. But for Blender EV, there isn't really any noise because it's a real-time render engine, so I don't really need the denoise in Blender EV. So I'm just going to press Control X to delete it, and Control X is going to delete it but keep um, these wires plugged up. All right, so let's save this final image. So to save the image, I'm just going to press the F11 key, or you can click right over here on the image editor. So right now we're at the render result, and this is not what I want. I want to click on this drop down here, and I'm going to change it to the viewer node to preview the final image. So then to save this image, you can just click on image, and then you can just click on save as. And I'll just save this as final render.png in a folder on my computer, and I can just click on save as. All right, so there we go. So this has been a really long tutorial so congratulations if you've made it this far and watched through the entire thing and I hope you learned a lot through this tutorial and made a really cool artwork as well. And again if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living so you can check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Those are two really great places to help support me and this YouTube channel. And you can also purchase the finished tutorial files of this tutorial on my Gumroad and Patreon. So thank you for watching this tutorial series, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.